And so the bones of the grave digger came closer and closer, and finally the headless horseman with the jack-o'-lantern aim took flight and threw it at... Oh, oh, well, good evening, good evening, and welcome to Monster Movie Night here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. Along with me, Bobby Gum Monster, your internet horror host, and my co-host here, Boris the Buzzer, would like to greet you with a happy Halloween, or happy All's Eve, Hallow's All Eve, or even a happy Samhain. There's just so many names nowadays for our beloved Halloween. <laughs> but here at the Old Manor, we'd just like to say happy Halloween, and plus, I'm reading a few uh, spooky tales here to Boris and my good friends. A little bit getting in uh, getting in shape and in livelihood. As you can see, I have uh, on my robes, my dark robes for this time of year. I can't believe that it's been a year already for Halloween, but here we are setting ourselves up ready for the little trick-or-treaters to come by <laughs> and uh, perhaps give them a few tricks and a few treats as well. I know Boris is ready for them, aren't you, Boris? Yes, a few tasty little tidbits. <laughs> ah, tonight, my good friends, I thought we would take a little journey back in time. Back in time to a time where witches and ghosts and foggy, wonderful, wonderful places, a place to get away, actually, and this, is, this place is called Hora Hotel. And it's about witches, and ghosts, and undead, and all the wonderful things that you think about at this time of year, at Halloween, right? <laughs> of course. So, Christopher Lee is the star of our show, of course, tonight. And he's taken you into a world of witches, witchcraft, and a place where I think it will scarify you. I know it will me and Boris, right? So let us get our cauldron a bubbling and our brew a going and ourselves a cackling. Let's go in to see Horror. <laughs>
Heinrich! Heinrich! Jethro Keen, hast thou consorted with the witch Elizabeth Selwyn? No. Burn the witch! In the year of our Lord, 1692, we, the people of Whitewood, Massachusetts, condemn thee as a witch. May the flames cleanse thy soul of its evil, of its lust for blood, but may they bring about the death of Abigail Adams. So when in 1692. Though, as I've said, little is known today of the actual practice of witchcraft in 17th century New England, superstition, fear, and jealousy drove the Puritans to accuse their friends and relatives of consorting with the devil. Raiding around huge bonfires, repeating vindictive chants, they consigned the poor creatures to the flames. The tortured souls cried out in agony as the flames mounted higher and higher. Burn, witch, burn, witch, burn, burn, burn. Take that crazy beat. Shh. That will be all for today. Tomorrow will be my concluding lecture on the history of witchcraft in 17th century New England. I shall bring along some illustrations which I'm sure will interest you all. I'll bring the matches. <laughs> Maitland! Since you chose to attend these lectures, I had hoped that it was in a spirit of scientific curiosity about the subject. That'll be all. Bill, yeah, how could you? <clears throat> Takes it all so darn seriously. He's got you all hypnotized. Oh, Miss Barlow. Yes, Professor. Can I see you for a moment, please? Yes. What about our date? I mean... Look, um, I'll wait for you outside. Huh? Yes, Professor. Rather a difficult young man, that. I fear that you are more of an attraction to him than my poor efforts. However, I've been reading through your papers, Miss Barlow. They show a very sound appreciation of the subject. I want to go to New England to do my senior paper. Mm -hmm. They're really quite good, you know. Oh, I'm not quite satisfied. I feel I need some first-hand research. I want to get the atmosphere. Find out how widespread witchcraft really was. What the witches were really like. Well, that might take a little time, you know. Well, I have the time. My brother and I were going to spend our vacation with our cousins. What I'd really like to do is to get a room in the smallest, oldest town in New England I can find. Check through all the town hall records, recheck the libraries, talk to the Puritan descendants, make a really thorough investigation. Your brother is professor of science, Miss Barlow. I hardly think he'd be very interested in the history of witchcraft. Then I'd go alone. 
If you don't think he'd object to that. You leave Richard to me. He's picking me up here for lunch. Hello, Bill. Where's Barlow? Nan here? Yeah, she's in there with him. Well, I don't like her getting mixed up in this witchcraft business. Why not? It's only part of a history course. Professor Barlow. Yeah? Before you go in there, could, could I have a word with you? Oh, sure. Well, it's about Nan and me. Oh. If you're really serious about this, I happen to know of a town in New England. As a matter of fact, it's the identical place where the events occurred that I mentioned in today's lecture, Whitewood. It's uh, quite a small place. It's a little bit off the beaten track, so maybe these directions will help you. Thank you. I think you might very well find what you're looking for there. I happen to know the woman who owns the inn at Whitewood. Her name is Newless, Mrs. Newless. So you just tell her I sent you. Raven's Inn, Whitewood. What's Whitewood? Now, Dick, don't be too upset, but uh, I'm going to change my plans for the vacation. Change your plans? Yes. Going to a place called Whitewood for a week or so to do some research. Who are you? What about Cousin Sue? Well, she's expecting you for a birthday party on the 17th. She'll never forget I can you. still easily make it by then. This is important. My term paper's got to be good. It could mean a scholarship. And I've made all the arrangements. Come on, Dick. You'll have a good time without me. My mind's made up. I'm going to Whitewood. But surely any good encyclopedia will give you all the nonsense you want to know about witchcraft. Witchcraft is not nonsense, Barlow. I'm sorry, Driscoll. Witchcraft, black magic sorcery, to me it's nothing but fairy tale mumbo jumbo. I'm a scientist, Driscoll. I believe what I can see, what I can feel and touch. The basis of fairy tales is reality. The basis of reality is fairy tales. Did you ever meet a witch, Driscoll? Perhaps. Oh, come on, you're an historian. No witch ever survived the burning at the stake for all that pact with the devil. In 1692, Elizabeth Selwyn went to the stake. She was buried in a churchyard in New England. And yet three years later... Yeah. Three years later, a new wave of blood sacrifices broke out in the village that had condemned her. The daughters of the elders who had condemned her were themselves found murdered with every last drop of blood drained from their bodies. And afterwards, people came forward to testify that they had actually seen Elizabeth Selwyn. Oh, stop. This would be more effective at midnight with howling winds and crashing thunder, and even then it wouldn't frighten anyone. Dick, I'm sorry, Professor Driscoll. That's all right, Miss Barlow. You won't be the first person to have scoffed at the subject. Honey, when you get to, um, where is it? Whitewood. Ah, yes, Whitewood. Well, send me a picture postcard of a witch. If possible, autographed. Now, uh, let's have some lunch, eh? I'm sorry, I have a date. <laughs> Nan, darling, I still don't see why you have to go off to this Whitewood place. Now, I thought we were going to have some time together during this vacation. You know I want to be with you. It's just this is important. Look, what the heck can you find that hasn't been found before? I don't know. It's just that maybe, hidden in some attic or buried in some old antique shop, there's something that might give a whole new outlook to the Oh, subject. what new outlook can there be? a science student, honey, you know how important research is. But this isn't about anything real. This is just superstitious people burning silly old women. But suppose the women weren't silly. Suppose they really had a pact with the devil. A pact that could have supernatural power. Oh, come on, what kind of power? I don't know. <laughs> well, look, it's no use, Bill. We've both tried our hardest to talk her out of going. Do you really think she will find anything worthwhile? Well, I think we have to respect her desire to find something new, even if we, even if we don't agree with the subject. Agree with it? I've never heard so much nonsense as that guy Driscoll talks in all my life. Well, here I am, all packed. Oh, I suppose there's nothing I can say will stop you from going, huh? Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll put this in the car. I still hope you change your mind, Nan. Don't worry, darling. 
I'll be back as quick as I can, and I'll write. Well, don't forget me altogether, huh? I won't. Give Sue my love, and don't forget we have a date at our party. Goodbye, darling. Excuse me, can you help me? I seem to be lost. Sure, if I can. I'm looking for the Wamport Road. Wamport Road? Hardly anyone uses that anymore. Well, my friend gave me the directions. Uh, take Road 28A, turn onto the Wamport Road, bear left at the fork through to Whitewood. Whitewood? Uh, am I that far away? No, ma'am, not far. Not many God-fearing folks visit Whitewood nowadays. If I were you, I'd... Uh, if, if you'll excuse me, I'm in a hurry. Which way is it? Well, follow this road about two miles. You come to a fourth. There'll be a sign, Wamport Road. Turn left, keep straight. There'll be Whitewood. Thank you very much. Wamport Road. Wamport Road, yes. Oh, good. I was afraid I missed it. Is it uh, Whitewood you seek? Yes. I too. Uh, would I be imposing if... No, of course not. Get in. Thank you. I think the Highway Commission would do something about these roads. Watch out. Here comes another bump. What is your mission in Whitewood? Mission? Well, I'm going there to do some research on witchcraft. Professor Driscoll gave us some very interesting lectures on the subject. And I'm going there to get some original source material. Do you know Whitewood? I've known it for many years. Do you go there often? Fairly often. Oh, then you must know the Raven's Inn. I shall be resting there. Oh, so shall I. Oh, my name's Nan Barlow. My name's Jethro Keen. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Just like a picture out of a history book. I feel as though I were in the 17th century. Why hasn't Whitewood been written about? It's off a beaten path. Few tourists come here. For Whitewood, time stands still. Look at that church. It must have been beautiful. What a shame they let it get so run down. Straight on? Yes, follow the road around. Oh, there it is. What a lovely old building. 17th century, at least. How picturesque can you get? Right by the graveyard. Yes, it has not been used for more than 200 years. Any witches buried there? There are indeed. All in a section of unconsecrated ground. Spooky, isn't it? Well, keep your fingers crossed for me, Mr. Keene. I hope Mrs. Newells has that room.
I didn't hear you come in. Are you Mrs. Newless? Mm. Oh, uh, I'm Nan Barlow. I was told I might find a room here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was recommended by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Perhaps you know him. That will be all, Lottie. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Unfortunately, Lottie cannot talk. I've often told her not to answer the bell. Oh, poor thing. Then you're Mrs. Newless. I am. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to have a room here for two weeks. The hotel is quite full. Oh, the guests are never about at this time of the day. Well, I'm a student of Professor Driscoll's. He told me if I mentioned his name, I'd have no trouble. Well, there is a room I could let you have. It's just off the lobby. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mrs. Newless, that plaque, is it true that Elizabeth Selwyn was really burnt here for being a witch? She was. And do you believe she was a witch? Come along. I'll show you to your room. I hope you will be comfortable. Yes, it is a nice room. The previous occupants have always found it most agreeable. Well, if there's anything you should need, just ring the bell for me at the desk. Thank you. the days to this holiday. So have the others. It wasn't easy for some of my guests to get here. Many had to travel vast distances. I was lucky. The last few miles were enchanting. Miss Barlow is very good company. You must be tired, Jethro. Your room is ready. And the festivities. I am prepared. Mrs. Newless, I thought I'd have a short look around town. I won't be gone long. I think you'll find the church interesting. Unfortunately, it no longer has a congregation. He will be pleased. I'm told this was once a house of worship. It is still a house of worship. I am the reverend of this church. As long as the breath of life is within me, this house shall remain God's house. Must have been a beautiful building. <laughs> me, it is still beautiful. I'm sorry. What a shame the people who have let it fall into such a state. Strangers rarely come to Whitewood. Who are you? I'm Nan Barlow. I'm staying at the Raven's Inn. Why have you come to Whitewood? Well, because I'm interested in witchcraft. Young woman, leave Whitewood. 
Leave Whitewood tonight. For 300 years, the devil has hovered over this city, made it his own. The people in it are his. Evil has triumphed over good here. Look at my church. I have no parish. No one worships here. His is the power. What power? Leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. I beg of you. What power? Leave before it is too late. <laughs> Excuse the mess, we haven't been open long. You have some very interesting things here. Yes, they, they belong to my grandmother. When she died, I came back to sort things out. Oh, I'm sorry. Then you don't live here? No, my family lived here for generations, but I've just been back a few weeks. Would you like to have a look around? Thank you. Oh, I didn't mean to frighten you when I came in. It's just that all the people I've met here have acted like I'm a person from another world. They don't see many strangers here. And I had the most... Well, unusual experience with the Reverend. He barred my way from the church. And he talked to me about a curse. And he warned me to leave Whitewood. Can you explain that? No, I can't. Does he often act that way? He's my grandfather. Oh, I I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's happened before with strangers. Oh, the lack of parishioners and loss of his sight has made him bitter and suspicious. I'm afraid what with him and the town, I, I was very scared. When I saw your lights, I made a dash for them. I'm glad you did. Um, do you have any books or pamphlets on witchcraft? You do, don't you? A friend of mine... Well, we, we have a collection gathering dust, but why on earth would you be interested in... Oh, I'm sorry, it's really none of my business. Oh, no, that's all right. I'm studying it in college, and I've come here to write my term paper. Well, just wait. I'll see what I can find. That's Elizabeth Selwyn, burned as a witch, March 3rd, 1692. Yes, I know. I saw the plaque in the lobby of the hotel. You are staying at the Raven's Inn? Yes. It was recommended to me by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Alan Driscoll? Yes, do you know him? No, but my grandfather speaks of him. His family come from here. Oh, I didn't know that. Here, I think this will do for a start. What a lovely locket. May I see it? I believe it's quite old. It is. You're very lucky. I'm even more lucky to have found this. A treatise on devil worship in New England. This must be a very rare book. I'm afraid I couldn't afford to buy it. You can borrow it, if you like. Oh, could I? That would be wonderful. I promise I'll bring it back in a few days. You're very welcome, Miss... Uh... Barlow. Nan Barlow. Nan Barlow. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. strange noises in my room. Oh, possibly the water and the pipes. This is a very old inn. No, it seemed to be coming from the cellar underneath. 
I hardly think so, Miss Barlow. The cellars do not extend beneath your room. But then why is there a trap door in the floor? The ground was filled in many years ago to strengthen the foundations of the building. But I'm sure well, I... if you insist, I will come and see you. I don't hear anything. Well, just a few minutes ago. Never mind, I'm sorry. You're welcome. But you can see for yourself there is no ring in the trapdoor because there is no reason to lift it. There is nothing underneath but earth. <laughs> More towels. I haven't used mine. They're quite clean. Lottie, I've told you before not to bother the guests. Miss Barlow, I thought you might care to join the others. I will as soon as I finish my notes. I'll put some clothes on and join them. A treatise on devil worship in New England. Well, do you find this interesting? Why, it's fascinating. The things I've learnt. I bet you don't know the half of it. And you live right here on a spot where the witches were actually burnt. Listen to this. On Candlemas Eve, February 1st, in the year 1692, a coven of witches, a coven that's 13, some men, some women, whose power came from the devil, gathered beneath the Raven's Inn to perform a black mass in the honor of Lucifer. The witch, Elizabeth Selwyn, later to be burnt at the stake, marked a young girl for sacrifice by obtaining an object of value belonging to her with which to call her, and leaving in its place a dead bird and a sprig of woodbine. The witches sacrificed her on the altar and drank her blood at the hour of 13. What's the hour of 13? Well, personally, I have never heard a clock strike more than 12. Now, how about joining the dancing? In a little while, I promise. Oh, by the way, I seem to have misplaced my locket. I remember having it in my room, and now it's disappeared. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll ask Lottie. Well, I'm, I'm not saying it was stolen. It's just I remember having it on the dresser, and now it's gone. I would appreciate it. Of course. I'll look into it immediately. Lottie, I have warned you too often about annoying our guests. If you disobey me again, I shall turn you out. And if I turn you out, there will be no place for you anywhere. You do understand, Lottie, don't you?
Ah, Miss Barlow. I'm afraid Lottie is nowhere to be found, but I will inquire about your locket first thing in the morning. Oh, thank you. Where is everybody? Most of the other guests have gone to services. Services on the 1st of February? Candlemas Eve. The night when the witches mock the rituals of the church. Are you all right, Miss Barlow? Yes, quite. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Miss Barlow. Enjoying the films, my friends? My fiends, my little goblins and ghoulies, huh? Huh? Enjoying the film for its Halloween festive eve? Hmm? I hope you are. And in fact, getting back to a little bit of the history or non-history of Halloween, it was not only a time for witches and ghosts, but it was a time to, to pay tribute to the dead. And it's also a time to do divinations with such things as Ouija boards, crystal balls, uh, things likened to all manners of uh, tarot decks and, and all manners of things likened to that. In fact, the Ouija board is probably one of the oldest besides the, besides the, um, the tarot deck to, uh, instrument to be used for, for divination. And as you can see, we have a, a Ouija board here. And basically, the premise of this was to have a bunch of people sitting by and having this placed on a table or between your legs, on your knees, and everyone join hands and then ask a question, is this house haunted? And of course, then you wait for the ghost to answer, and I believe, oh my, let's see, it's moving, it is moving, I don't know if you people, good people can see that, but it is moving too, yes, all right. <laughs> Just as we had hoped, and let's see if we can make the ghost put it back into to the center ring, as they say, can you do that? I don't know if they can or not, it's very hard to balance, but there it goes. Maybe if I push it like this, hold it like this. There it goes. You see that, Boris? You do? Is it scaring you? Okay, well, let's put that up for a little while. And as I said, they also use crystal balls. Of course, the time of Halloween is a time to pay tribute to death. And so let us see what our good friend, the Mr. D, has for us. Some advice to say for us. Did you hear that? He said, if we were too open-minded, our brains would fall out. Can you imagine? That's some good advice. I'll try to remember that. And you remember that as well. And I hope you have enjoyed a little bit about Halloween divination, crystal ball, the, the um, Ouija board. And now, let's go back to Hora Hotel.
six, seven. No! No, no, no! No, no, no! I am Elizabeth Selwyn. No, no! Eleven. No! Let go! Let go! show up. She, she probably met a good-looking he-witch and is bringing him along to the party, only they broomstick blew a gasket. Well, it's not like Nan to be late for anything. Aren't you a bit worried about her? Oh, she'll be here. I'm sure she'll make it. Oh, it's probably her now. Well, you answer the door and I'm going to put a record on for some dancing. All right. Hi, Dick. Bill. Oh, what's the matter? You expecting somebody else? Oh, yes, Nan. Look, come in, come in. Well, Nan, didn't you hear yet? We made a date to meet here before she left for Whitewood. Well, she probably got held up. Look, look, give me your coat, huh? Ah, Nan was never late for anything in her life. Relax. Take it easy. Join the party. She'll be here. Dick. Dick, I haven't had a letter from Nan in over two weeks now. Well, she's probably been too busy working on her paper. No, no, there's something wrong. I know it. Look, will you do something for me? Mm -hmm. Ring up Whitewood, will you? Ask him, ask him if she's left. You serious? Yes, I am. Okay. On a long distance, I'd like to speak with Miss Nan Barlow at the Ravens Inn, Whitewood. No, I, uh, I don't know the phone number. What? Didn't she give you the phone number? Oh, I know, but uh, that's my sister. They say there's no such place as the Raven's Inn. But that's crazy. She's staying there. Give me the police. She left in such a hurry, she must have forgotten to return it to you, Miss Russell. She seems such a nice girl, too. Wouldn't have thought she was the sort who'd forget to return a book. We cannot always judge by our first impressions, can we? I'm not usually wrong about the people I lend my books to. Well, perhaps you'll be more careful in future. Thank you for letting me have it. Remember me to your grandfather. Lottie, get out of the way, you clumsy creature. Help you? Yes, we're from the sheriff's office. We had a call this evening. A missing person's report from some college kid named Nan Barlow. The party calling said that her last known whereabouts was the Raven's Inn. Nan Barlow, that's strange. Yes, I met her. When did you last see her? About two weeks ago. She came to my shop and, and borrowed this book. It's quite valuable, and so not hearing from her, I decided to come and get it. Mrs. Newless had it. May I? Yes. A treatise on devil worship. I must put this in the report. Peculiar things some of these college kids do nowadays. Well, thanks for your help. Come on, Charlie.
Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Well? The police sent a car out to the Raven's Inn. Man checked out two weeks ago. I don't get it. Well, neither do I. Look, these are Nan's books and papers. Go through them. See if you can find anything which might give us a lead. I'm going to pay a visit to a colleague of mine. You weren't in. No, uh, no, I wasn't. Do you care to go in the study? Sit yourself down. Thanks. You take a drink? Ryan soda. Ice, please. Now what's on your mind? The man's missing. And she has been since the day after she arrived at Whitewood. Really? You quite sure? That's what the police said. What are they doing about it? Carrying out a routine check? I, I don't suppose they can do much more until they've got something definite to go on. Well, I would have thought there was a very great deal more they could do. What? As far as they're concerned, she disappeared two weeks ago and no one in the village seems to know anything about it. What did you come see me for? I thought you might have some ideas. Why did you send her to Whitewood? Because it was the best place for her research. And you suggested she stay at the Raven's Inn. I'm sure, it's the only inn there is. But an unlisted phone number? The inn has its own clientele, Barlow. It doesn't need to advertise. How do you know it so well? Because I was born in Wetwood. I see. And you'd have every reason to believe she'd be perfectly safe in going there. I have no reason to suppose that she wouldn't be. Nan struck me as being perfectly capable of taking care of herself. I grant you that, but why hasn't she come back or let us know? Look, Barlow, I can understand your anxiety, but I'm quite sure there's nothing for you to worry about. Nothing at all. She's probably got absorbed in the subject and gone off someplace. I wish that all my class had her application. Yeah, well, I'm going to find out where this application led her. I'm going to retrace every step Nan took. I'm either going to find Nan or know what happened to her. I can't stop you from going. No. I'm not afraid. Afraid? Why? If anything did happen to your sister and somebody else went along to try and find out about it. Same thing might happen to them? Possible. You seem to think something happened to my sister then. No, I just think you're jumping to conclusions, Barlow. Maybe, but uh, I shall find her. Professor Driscoll? Yes? I don't like to disturb you, but may I see you? Well, of course, please come in. Good luck in Whitewood. Thanks. I'm sorry, but did you say he was going to Whitewood? Yes, he is. Silly to be surprised, but uh, I've just come from Whitewood. Really? It's quite a coincidence. My own family happens to come from Whitewood. As a matter of fact, I was born there. Yes, I know. Please sit down. Thank you. Do you care for a drink? No, thank you. I think you know my grandfather, the Reverend Russell. Russell? Why, oh, yes, of course I do. How long have you been living in Whitewood? Since my grandmother died a few weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, now, how can I help you? I've come about a pupil of yours, Barlow, Nan Barlow. Yes? She came to Whitewood two weeks ago. I met her and liked her, and she told me that she was a student in one of your classes, that you recommended that she stay at the Raven's Inn. That's quite right, I did. Well, that's what I've come to see you about. 
On the day after she arrived, she disappeared. Oh? Later, the police came asking questions. Her family were worried. I thought you might have their address. And why do you want her family's address? Because I have something of hers I want to return. Well, you just leave it with me and I'll make sure they get it safely. Well, I, I don't want to trouble you. If, if you just give me their address. As you wish. Her address is Dorchester Street. Two, two, five. She lives with her brother. As a matter of fact, he's a colleague of mine. You just met him. He was leaving when you arrived. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm rather a busy man at the moment. Of course. Thank you for your help. Not at all. I hope it achieves something. Well, you will remember me to your grandfather, won't you? Yes, of course. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Russell. Locket, all right. As far as I know, it's unique. I gave it to her. Where did you get it? The servant at the inn gave it to me. It was strange. I don't think she wanted Mrs. Newless to know I had it. Mrs. Newless? Well, she runs the inn. Well, why did you come here, Miss, uh, Miss Russell? I found this. It's Professor Driscoll's notepaper. I found it in the pages of a book I lent your sister on her first evening in Whitewood. When she didn't return it, I went to the hotel. What was the book? An old book. A book about witchcraft. Do you believe in it, Miss Russell? I don't know. Sometimes I almost think I live with it. Live with it? It's an obsession of my grandfather's. Up till now, I didn't take him very seriously. He's an old man. But now I'm beginning to wonder if what he says isn't true. What does he say? That there's something evil about the village. That on certain nights, the inhabitants leave the streets, close their doors, and stay behind them. That on these nights, the dead come to life. Nights like Candlemas Eve? What do you know about Candlemas Eve? It's in one of Nan's books. I don't believe it. Things like this don't happen today. In Whitewood, I wonder. I'm going to Whitewood tomorrow after classes. I, I can give you a lift. Thank you, but I, I must get back. I can't leave my grandfather alone. He's blind. May I come and see you when I arrive? I'd, uh, I'd like to have a talk with him. Please do. It's the house next to the church. Goodbye. Right. I'll see you to the door. Whitewood? Yes. Would you take me along with you? It's a dark night for walking. You're the Reverend Russell's granddaughter, aren't you? Yes. How did you know? I know a great deal about Whitewood. Have you ever been there? None, then. Never seen you. To see me is a special privilege. It's reserved for a chosen few. What does that mean? We'll soon be at Whitewood now. This is as far as I go. You will... She is. Very pretty. A living descendant of those who were cursed. It somehow seems to make it better. Another day. And tomorrow. The witches.
Which way to Wamport Road? Straight ahead. Walk in the road. You see a sign. Turn left. You heading for Whitewood? I am. Many people head this way? Not many. Is this the only way in and out of the town? In this direction, yep. You wouldn't remember by any chance a, a pretty girl in a convertible about a month ago. The Barlow girl. Read about her in the papers. Never seen her again. Told the police. Thanks. Could you tell me the way to Whitewood, please? Another one. Straight ahead. Fork in the road. You see a sign, Warmport Road. Turn left. Takes you right in. But well, thanks. Let me warn you, young fella. They don't like strangers in Whitewood. Okay, fine. Thanks very much. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like a room, please. The inn is closing. Well, I'll only be here a few days. But the inn is closing. When? In two days. Well, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to stay until then. If you insist. And could I... Could I have the, uh, the same room my, my sister had? It's still available, isn't it? Yes, it's available. Mrs. Nolis, you told the police that my sister checked out. You are mistaken, Mr. Barlow. I told them that on the morning of February 2nd, I went to her room and found it empty, her bed not slept in, her luggage and car gone, and her bill unpaid. Well, you can put the charges on mine. When was the last time you saw her? On the evening of February 1st. It was shortly before midnight. She'd been in the lobby here dancing with some of the guests. She seemed to be enjoying herself. Did any particular guest pay a, a special attention to her? And not that I noticed. Your sister kept very much to herself. You know why she came to Whitewood? It is not my habit to inquire into people's private business. Well, would the fact that she was, she was investigating witchcraft have antagonized anyone in the village? Hardly. There have been other students here, you know. Besides, your sister was a very agreeable and likable young woman. Well, have you any idea where she might have gone? None. Thank you. Now, may I see the room? As you wish. It is this way. If you should need anything and I am not at the desk, you have only to ring the bell. Thank you.
Hello. I'm so glad you've come. I saw your car outside the Ravens Inn earlier. I wondered what had happened to you. I've been talking with Mrs. Nulis, and then I, I took a walk around the village. Find out anything? Everyone here seems to be afraid of something. And you don't think it's just my imagination? I don't know. Who's to say where imagination ends and truth begins? It's, it's nothing tangible. It's just the way they look at you. I felt it too. May I see the, uh, the book that Nan borrowed? Yes. I put a marker between the pages where she must have stopped reading. Just sit down and I'll tell my grandfather you're here. Thank you. I warned you, Lottie. Grandfather, this is Mr. Barlow. How do you do, sir? God be with you. Shall we sit where we'll be more comfortable? Here's your chair, Grandfather. You must be tired. I am very tired. I have a little strength left these days for the fight. Won't you sit down? I'll make some coffee. The fight against what, Mr. Russell? Against the evil that besets this village. The people are creatures of the devil. They know no other god. You mean they worship Satan here, today? Satanism was never stronger than at the present time. For 200 years, the people of Whitewood have carried out rituals that mock the church's teaching. I find it very hard to believe, sir. I... Do not doubt, my son. It is real enough. For years, I struggled against the witches. Their master took away my sight. Seems incredible. I have tried to convince others. They, too, found it unbelievable. But I know these people have a pact with the devil to worship him and do his works. In return, he gives them eternal life. Eternal life? Aye. And to seal this bargain, they must sacrifice a young girl on two nights of the year. When are these nights, sir? Candlemas Eve. And the witch's Sabbath. Candlemas Eve, that's, that's February the 1st. And when is the witch's Sabbath? Tonight. Now you know why I came to see you. I had no idea it was so late. May I, may I have a rain check on the coffee? I'd like to have a few words with Miss Nulis again. Of course. Good night, sir. Good night. I'll see you to the door. God be with us. Oh, Miss Russell, do you think that Nan's disappearance is connected in some way with these uh, witches' ceremonies? Yes. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to come back later, if I may. Please do. And my name is Pat. Oh, mine's Richard. I think I feel better now you're here. Well, I'm, I'm going to stay until I find out what's happened to Nan. Take care. Now drink your coffee before it gets cold. You must not see that young man again tonight. Why not? The devil comes in many disguises. I'll get you a spoon. And Father, there's a bird in the drawer. It's got an arrow through it. Go and look on the front door. Bye. 
Shut the door. Shut the door quickly. Grandfather, what does it mean? Now listen, my darling. This is their sign. The witch's sign. What can we do? We must leave here. Leave here immediately. <laughs> Barlow. Is that for me? Yes. Hello? Dick! Dick, I'm in terrible danger. We've got to leave Whitewood at once. Danger? But from what? We've got to leave... Ah! Pat! Please help me! Patricia! Pat! Mr. Russell. The witches. The witches have Patricia. Destroy them. Mr. Russell, how? The shadow of the cross. To use the cross. I adjure thee, O creatures of salt, by the living God.
Indian wedding to do. Dick, these are the dead who killed Nan. Marla. Settled with Mrs. Newis. You stay here.
colors and boo screams to everyone. Wasn't that a wonderful, spooktacular film for a Halloween night where the fog is rolling in <laughs> and take a fright? Oh, our poor dear friends, the witches didn't fare very well in this particular film, did they? Well, maybe better luck next time. You know that Christopher Lee, he tried his best though, didn't he? Yes, he did. What a wonderful actor of horror and, and all things scary and other genres as well, right? We love Mr. Mr. Christopher Lee. Still around at 90 years old or so. Yes, really, that's not so bad. He's still young in his prime. He'll probably go on to be at least 200, I'm sure. Anyway, glad you could stop in here with us and spend the year, another year at, of Halloween with us and enjoy the spooks, enjoy the tricks and the treats. And until next time, keep screaming.